Hello everyone, my name is Fox. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Geekum's latest mini PC, their A7. This has AMD's 7940HS. To put that in perspective, this device has as much power as a 1996 supercomputer that was running and filled inside of a room that was just chugging power. All of that has been condensed down into a computing platform that can fit into the palm of my hand. Also that you can browse a website. <laughs> It's just an absurd misuse of performance and power where we are right now. But that's, them's the breaks. This is where we are. We're looking at a mini PC. You can do a ton of different things. We're going to be showing off some Cinebench scores, some gaming benchmark scores. And you can also do some emulation, which I might wrap up in another video outside of this one. But we're going to be taking a look at the type of performance that you can get out of this device. We're going to be following up first with an unboxing so you can see what that's like. And then we'll run through some gaming benchmarks that I've done. And I've routed all that throughout to my capture card. So you'll be able to see pristine quality of what it looks like. And we're going to try it for a 1080p output. Uh, not all games are going to be doing that, especially the latest modern games. We're going to have to dial that down quite a bit. I did manage to play a full game of Helldivers 2. It was very foggy, but I managed to complete it. There are ways that we can try to tweak this a little bit further, but there are some limitations of what the platform is able to do. Without further ado, let's get right into the unboxing. All right, here we are unboxing Geekum's A7. So we'll go ahead... And take a look at what we have this is still wrapped up we can see that we have the model a7 it's using the 7940 hs and it includes 32 gigs of ram and a 2 terabyte ssd really it's a, a very good starting package for what you'd want out of this so let's go ahead and open this up all right with that out of the way let's go ahead and unbox it oh nice look at that that is a handsome little device So we have our SD card slot on the side. Wow, look at all the ports that you have on the back. Look at this, it's multi-gig. So we got two HDMI, DC barrel jack in. So we have two USB on the front, three and a half millimeter, nice little power button. This is a nice little device. Put this over here and see what else is on the front. It says, thank you for your support. Very nice. So let's see what this says. This little card, nice. So thank you card. Let's see, it's underneath. This is where we're gonna find our power brick. Okay, so this is the cable for power brick. They give you an HDMI cable. And here is the power brick itself. It uses these. I'm not a big fan of these tri-wing types of inputs because they're just non-standard but I know that you know they take up less space so I can understand why they would do it but it's not like a C13 or C14 ending but it is really really small you can see how small it is in my hand right there we see our output is 19 volt at 6.32 amp so that's 120 watt this will be why we're not using USB-C directly to power it and then here is the instruction booklet Gives you instructions on how to disassemble it. So this will just be on the bottom plate. You're going to be removing these. You remove these little rubber stoppers and then you'll be able to get to it. Nice. Okay, so that's the unboxing for the Geekum A7. So here is what the BIOS looks like on the Geekum A7. You can see that the SSD that we have is an Acer SSD, an N5000. Manufacturer's name is Geekum. The product name is A7, so that's all filled out correctly. We can see that we have the 7940HS with Radeon 78M graphics. This is the model that has 32 gigs of DDR5 in there. You can see that we're running at 5600 mega transfers is what the speed of the RAM is running at. We'll see if we can't change that. Fan mode is set to normal mode. We're going to go to set that to performance mode to see if we can't enhance performance a little bit. You saw that we were getting to 95 degrees Celsius at our Cinebench 2024 benchmark test. So we're going to see if we can't improve that in any way and also try to push TDP a little bit higher. So we'll see what is available there. All right, so there's that. So not a whole bunch of options available to us from the Giga May 7. It's pretty lackluster here. So we're gonna go ahead and save changes and reset and see what happens. 
All right, so just we have some quick information on Cinebench 2024 results. You can see our multi-core score here is 811 points and single core is 106 points. How that compares to other platforms, let's go ahead and expand this. You can see that we're doing reasonably well. Now this is the default settings that are on the Geekum A7. So this is what you should expect. Sight unseen, tuning nothing, just Put it, powering on the machine and going. And this is the types of results that you should get on the Geekum A7. We're gonna see if we can't improve this in any way. Uh, if we take a look at what's going on here, we can see that our uh, CPU T-Die, which is gonna be the hottest point on any part of the die, we reached 94.8 uh, degrees Celsius. These chips are meant to run hot. So this is uh, basically where the T-junction should be. So this is what we would be seeing regardless, but the machine that Geekum sent me, the defaults that they sent me are very well tuned. As it is, the fan is slightly audible from running at these default settings, so that is something to be mindful of. All right, so this is actually pretty interesting. Take a look at this. So when we went to performance mode on the fan, it actually sets TDP higher. So the performance mode that we're set in the fan actually pushes the system to a higher spec. So it's going to be louder, but we don't have to do anything. You can literally just set performance mode on the fan and it's automatically gonna TDP up based on that. So that's pretty interesting. I've gone ahead and already changed our clock default limit because 7940HS is gonna to wanna to have a clock ceiling of four gigahertz. I've gone ahead and got rid of that and set it to, to default and we'll see what can happen. I'm gonna go ahead and change our EPP mode to something that's a little bit more aggressive on the CPU side just because we have so much power going to this machine right now that I don't think we need as much. So I'm going to go ahead and press zero here. Current plan we have, that's fine. We'll go ahead and take off game mode. All right, that's fine. So let's go ahead and rerun Cinebench 2024 and see what happens. Okay, so you can see 54 watt there. You can see that we're already at 81 degrees Celsius, 82 degrees Celsius. And we'll see if anything changes for us. The fan doesn't actually get any louder. It's as, as loud as the balance profile is in the BIOS. So we have a nine watt increase and we do get a significantly better score. Also, I am uh, raising the CPU cap, which is often at four gigahertz. And you actually see it uh, notified, like signified in Cinebench. You can see it says uh, eight core 16 thread at four gigahertz. 7840HS, 7840U, uh, 7940HS, all of these are T technically cap they have a clock limit cap we can take that cap off and make it go much higher um so we got a much better multi-core score however if we take a look at our temps we did hit 99.4 degrees celsius and when we did hit that it automatically lowered the tdp down to about 50 watts so uh, the performance mode if you're pushing it it will uh self-regulate itself just to save itself but for the most part, it was hitting 54, 54 watts continually up until we had a temperature problem. So it's pretty good that we have a sizable, a nice chunk increase in our multi-core score and our single threaded core score, we really didn't get much better. So it's really gonna be up to you on what you really wanna do. Fan noise wise, they're basically the same thing. For Batman Arkham Knight, I am running 1920 by 1080. Max FPS is set to 90, VSync is off, everything else is set to as high as I can possibly make it, as well as turning off any NVIDIA game works. So we'll go ahead and play. I have this HUD up just so you can see it, but when I'm actually playing, when I'm actually doing the benchmarks, that'll get disabled so we'll get a lot better raw data in so far as our benchmarks. The type of TDP you can see on our CPU package power, we're at like 38, it'll be on that side. So we're about... We're using 60 watts right now, 58 watts. So I'm just displaying that to you just so you can see what's going on. So you can get an idea of the type of performance that we're getting as we're running through this. Okay, so just so you can see, I am using the Steam Deck preset for my graphics here, which is using FSR 2.1 balance setting. Picture quality is set to high, crowd density is low. This is all my other stuff. I am actually gonna bump FOV up to 100, just because I like that better when I'm playing on PC with mouse and keyboard. And these are all the other settings. When we go to video, I am going to jot this down a whole bunch, because mostly I'm targeting 1080p here. Let me do full screen. Fucking drive, Jackie. Come on, B, shoot! Can't keep her steady. Hold tight, B! Holy fuck! Mierda, perdón! Got 
got you, asshole! V! Aim for the driver! Chingalo! All right, and the settings I'm using for Doom Eternal. Once again, I'm going to be targeting 1080p, so let me do this, and that's 1080p. We'll go ahead to apply changes. Uh, vertical sync, we'll just turn off for right now. Uh, let's see what else we have. Performance metrics, I'm going to go ahead and put on Ultra Nightmare just because I like seeing them up here as well. And overall quality at high is fine. Resolution scaling, okay. And keep that to dynamic. So we will be using some resolution scaling, no ray tracing whatsoever. Alright. Okay, so this is God of War. The preset that I use is low, so in graphics this is low. And display, because we want to do borderless, because it's going to do the max, I do have a 4K monitor, so I am going to be using ultra performance. This way the render resolution is actually 720p, and it's going to upscale to 4K. So it should look very good, but uh, obviously with ultra performance, you're going to see a lot of frizzling that's going on around the edges. <laughs> This is Helldivers 2. It's running at 4K with crazy settings, so I'm getting absolutely atrocious frame rate here. It looks fantastic in the slideshow presentation that it's in. Uh, let's go ahead and lower some of these settings. All right, we'll go to options here. Display. It's definitely going to benefit of going down to 720p. 54 FPS. Okay. But it's a bit herky jerky. Okay. Seems like it's better now. Alright, so let's see if we can't go ahead and get into a game of some kind. So that's my review on Gigam's latest A7 mini PC. It's actually a tiny little device. Overall, what we're looking at is a device that can be audible, no matter what you're going to be doing, especially in the BIOS settings, depending on what you're going to be choosing there. If you choose what the standard is, the default, the TDP is capped to 45 watts. You will still hear the fan when it's about two feet away from you. So if it's further away from you, you're not going to really hear it. Likewise, if you set it to performance mode, it really doesn't change the fan noise all that much, even though we are... It, effectively looking like we're trying to dial in the fan noise because there's quiet standard and performance. Effectively, the fan noise is exactly the same. It just bumps up TDP. And at performance modes for the fan setting, we will reach an area where we're going to be pushing too much power into the device and it won't be able to cool properly in some workloads that you're going to be pushing there. So anticipate that periodically, if you're going to be pushing that too far, it's going to self-dial down the amount of power that it's pushing in the platform just to reduce the amount of heat that's there. Pretty much that's the only thing that I could say as a negative for the device is that it could have a better heatsink solution, but overall what it does, by default, you're never going to have any particular problem with the device. You will be able to hear it. It is audible. It's not super loud, but it is an audible fan that you can hear within a foot or two away from you. It's a low hum that is available there. But overall, when you look at a device that is as powerful as this is, and for the price, it's very competitive with other devices and the other mini PCs that are out there. And if you want something that looks kind of like a mini uh, Mac mini, this is going to be something that you're looking for. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.